You may have seen a video from this kind of small YouTuber named Theo recently about the dangers of promise at all, but you probably didn't see this clip from after he finished recording the video on stream. I think that was a useful rant. I know, effect go burr. I know, I know. Honestly, Ethan, do you want a banger video idea? When I get this one out, you should do a response. Why Theo should be using effect PS. That would slaughter. That would destroy the algorithm as far as I can imagine. In Theo's video, he correctly points out a common foot gun of using promise at all. The fact that if even a single pass promise rejects, so does the entire collective promise, even if the rest resolve without errors. Theo recommends promise.all settled instead, which, while it still does address some issues, still has a lot of its own that are just kind of baked into the promise API itself. I'm going to go into this in a bit more detail and talk about a potential solution using a library you might have heard of called Effect, which makes working with async and TypeScript much more robust. Let's start with a diagram. The root of our whole problem here is that we have multiple promises that we want to await the results of concurrently. Otherwise, we could just use the await keyword and do them one at a time. The usual recommendation is just to use promise at all, but the problem is errors happen. When errors occur, there are two strategies we can employ. The first is what's called short circuiting, where as soon as an error occurs, we immediately fail the entire operation. So in this diagram, we have five different tasks that are running. And here, the second one fails before some of the other ones complete. But the result of the entire operation is a failure as soon as that happens. The other option is to kind of wait it out and let everything finish and then return all of the results, even if they're in error. And we can see this at the bottom. Here, we wait for the very last task to finish and then return all the results. And you can see even the error is in here. You can think of short circuiting kind of like throwing in a function. Everything stops immediately. Where this other option is like waiting until the very end of the function and then returning either a value or an error. Let's take a look at the example from Theo's video. Theo's example is pretty simple, but there's a couple functions I want to go over. The first is wait for, which simply returns a promise that resolves after some time using set timeout. Then we have work. Work takes a number, and if the number is four, it throws an error. Otherwise, it waits for that number of seconds and then returns a new number. Finally, we have the main function. The main function takes an array of numbers one through five and maps it with work to get an array of promises. And then we use promise at all to get the results. And we wrap this entire thing in a try catch block and main is just on this button. When we run this code, you can see that we get this main failed for reason almost immediately. And that's the catch block of the main function going off. Our main function is completely finished because of that error thrown by the work where four is, but you can see these other promises are still going off. Theo's argument is that it doesn't make sense to waste this work and that we should aim to do this kind of collection operation instead. And you can do that with promise.all settled. And promise.all settled collects the errors as well. Let's see what that looks like. When we use promise.all settled, you can see that the main function waits until all of the promises resolve to finish. And when it finishes, we get an array of successes and an array of errors. Now, this is cool, but it still has some problems. Now that we have errors as values, it might be actually useful to know what those errors might be. But the problem is promise.all settled returns a promise settled result array, which is really just a union of either a promise fulfilled result or a promise rejected result. And if we look at this promise rejected result type, you can see that the reason is actually any. We get zero type safety about the error here, which means that when we filter out the errors from the successes, which by the way requires this kind of ugly code, our errors is an any array. This is horrible. We can do so much better. My goal with the rest of the video is to prove to you that effect.all is better than promise.all or promise.all settled. Well, what is effect? Effect is a TypeScript library that is a set of tools to make writing apps easier. And it's also really big. I'm going to give you the bare minimum you need to understand the code to come, but if you're interested in this, you'll definitely want to check out some additional resources. Really, the only thing you need to understand is the effect type. An effect is a value that's generic over three things. The first is some type requirements, which we actually don't need to worry about at all for this video. And the second two are the most important. It's generic over some error and some value. An effect when run will produce either this type error or this type value. You might already be starting to realize how much better this is than the promise API, which is only generic over one type. Having type safe errors is amazing. And I'm going to show you that in the rest of the video. Now let's convert Theo's example to use effect.all. This will require some minor modifications, but I promise it's not that much. 
First, our work function. As you can see, here's the previous function before, just to compare. And our new work effect function is actually line for line, almost identical. We just have a console log first, and then we have an if statement. And instead of throwing, now we're going to return an effect failure containing a for error. And a for error is just a class that has some string tag. But what this does is where throw is completely untype safe. Effect.fail means that when we hover the return type of this function, the for error is in that second generic spot where the error type occurs. Next, instead of a waiting wait for, we do this syntax that I know looks kind of weird, but is actually pretty similar to a wait with this yield star. And then we call effect.promise where we call wait for. And then finally, we do this log at the end and return the number. Next, our main function. Again, line for line, almost identical. We do a console.log, we create an array, but this time, instead of an array of promises, we have an array of effects, which as you can see, it's an effect never for error number, which means that this effect will either error with a for error or succeed with a number. Then we call the topic of this whole video, effect.all. You might notice this concurrency unbounded argument, and that's because by default, effect.all runs effects one at a time. So in order to mimic the behavior of promise.all, we need to set this concurrency argument to unbounded. Finally, just like before, we log the results. When we hover this main effect, you can see that the for error is still there. That's because we never put any error handling logic, right? Like before we had this catch, but now we have nothing. But effect is telling us on a type level that this function could still error with a for error. So down here, before we have our main function, we have this effect.catchAll. And this takes a function that handles that error, where in a catch block, E is always unknown because it's not type safe. Here, we know that this error is always a for error because that's the only error it can be. And in that case, we just log that we got an error. Finally, we pass this whole thing to effect.runpromise to run our effect, and that's our main function. When we run this in the browser, it looks almost the same as promise at all, but now with much more type safety. However, this still stops on this for error. If we want to replicate the collection behavior of promise at all settled, how can we do that in effect? This actually only requires a single function, effect.either. The type signature for effect.either looks like this. You might be a bit confused, but all it's doing is instead of erroring, it's giving you the error as a value, very similar to what we're doing in promise.allsettled. You might be wondering what this either type is, and it's basically the same as a union, but way cooler because it has built-in guards, like is left and is right, built-in pattern matching, and mapping. And again, all type safe. Very cool. Let's see what it would look like to use effect.either in our code. The only modification I made is this one line. Instead of passing our effect array to effect.all, we first map it with the effect.either function. This gives us an array of effects that will never error and instead returns an either of a for error or a number. This means that what we get back from effect.all is an either of a for error or a number. As I mentioned earlier, because either has so many built in helper functions, filtering is super easy with either that is left and either that is right. And again, it's all fully type safe. We have a for error array or a number array. When we run this in the browser, it gives us the exact same behavior as promised at all settled, but again, now much more type safety. Very, very cool. Just for a bit of comparison, before we always rejected with unknown or got back in any array, and filtering was kind of a mess. Now with effect, we get fully typed errors, and using effect.either, it's super easy to filter and pattern match these results. Let's go back to this diagram for a second. While Theo's advice is generally good, there might actually be some situations where you do want a short circuit. And there was an interesting tweet about this, which I'm going to show on screen now, from the This Week in React author Seb. And he makes some good points. But with short circuiting comes one additional problem. If we go back to our original promise.all example, you might notice that, again, even though our main function failed, these set timeouts still go off. Now, in this example, set timeout is pretty trivial, and you're probably not going to notice anything. But these promises in a real app might be doing actual work or making database calls or API calls. And again, main has finished. These promises are essentially useless to us. We are never getting the results back. So if we short circuit, what we need is a way to interrupt those other promises that are useless to us now. And this is where the second half of the diagram I've been hiding away comes into play. The way you would do this normally is using the abort controller API. Let's take a look at what that might look like. The first thing we're going to do is modify our wait for function. I have the previous function up here so you can compare. In the new function, we're going to take an abort signal as an additional argument. Then we add an event listener so on that abort, we can clear the timeout and reject the promise. 
Next, the change to our work function is pretty simple. All we're doing is taking in an abort signal and just passing it to our new wait for abortable function. Finally, in our main function, we're going to create a new abort controller and get the signal from that controller and pass it to each of our work abortable calls. Then in our catch block, which will go off if any of the promises reject, we call abort, which will cancel all the other running promises. And this seems to work quite well. Let's take a look. As we can see, as soon as main finishes, all of our timeouts get canceled and all of our promises reject. Nice. Well, then what's the problem? The thing is, creating and managing abort controllers yourself in an example like this is pretty simple. But when you start needing to pass these signals through multiple layers of functions and having multiple abort sources and targets, things can easily get confusing and difficult to keep track of. So how is Effect different? Effect has its own internal runtime, which has its own version of lightweight threads called fibers. Fibers can be aborted or interrupted, and Effect provides you an abort signal to easily tie into this behavior. The Effect version looks like this. Our wait for abortable function is actually the exact same. But now in our work function, in the place where we call the wait for, Effect gives us an abort signal to pass to it. And that's it. When an error occurs, Effect will trigger that abort signal. Now you might have noticed earlier that the way we implemented our wait for abortable function is that when it gets interrupted, it actually rejects. And remember, effect is all about type safety on errors. So when that promise rejects, we need some error. So I just created a new class called wait for error, which if the wait for abortable function rejects, we can create. Now our effect benefits chart is growing even bigger, but there's still a couple things covered, and that's going to lead me to my last topic, limiting concurrency. Promise at all and promise at all settled both have what's called uncontrolled concurrency. This means that they're going to run every promise you pass to them concurrently at the same time. If you pass an array with a thousand promises, promise.all or promise.all settled is going to run all a thousand, which might have some performance implications. What we really want is what's called controlled concurrency, where we can set a maximum number of promises to be running at any one time. And the traditional way you do that is this, an async queue. Now, an async queue is actually a really good exercise to try implementing yourself if you never have before, but it would be really nice to avoid all of this. And what's great is that effect actually makes this really easy. Remember that concurrency unbounded argument from earlier? Well, as well as taking the unbounded string, it can also take a number. So here, our new main function actually takes a number limit and then just passes that limit to the concurrency option. And that's all you need to do. When we run this in the browser here with a concurrency limit of two, you can see that only two are going to run at a time. The effect runtime handles everything for you and makes it super easy. Working with async is really hard, especially when we want to have code that doesn't completely blow up as soon as a single promise rejects. Effect allows us to bring type safety to our error handling as well, which makes handling these errors much more robust. If you're interested by what you saw in this video, you should totally give Effect a try. I have a whole 30 minute Effect tutorial made for people brand new to Effect that's going to be on the screen now, so definitely check that out. But also check out the Effect docs on the website, they're really good. If you want to check out some of the code for yourself, all of it's going to be in a GitHub repo down below, as well as a link to a live version of the site I've been using throughout the video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.